In this video, you will learn how to program a first-person movement system. Let's get into it. Here we have set up an environment, link in the description, the player, and the default camera. Let's start by positioning the camera right in front of the player's eyes. Make sure the projection is set to perspective, and I'm going to slightly increase the field of view and bring down the near value a bit so the camera will get closer to the player's eyes and set the far value to 150 because we don't need it to capture things that far ahead. Also, if you're working on a big project, this will help a lot with your frame rate. Now let's select the player and add a rigid body and disable the gravity on it. Then add a new script called movement and inside Visual Studio. First, we need access to the camera's transform component, but make sure you don't name it camera because mono behavior is already using that name. Then we need a public float for the speed of the movement and one for the speed of the rotation, two private floats that are gonna hold our X and Y rotations, a private rigid body to access the player's rigid body component, a vector 3 called offset and another one called move delta. Now in the awake function, let's get a reference to our rigid body by saying RB is equal to get component rigid body. Here, the get component function will search for a rigid body assigned to the game object this script is attached to and assign it to our RB variable. Then in the start method, write cursor.lock state is equal to cursor lock mode dot lock and cursor dot visible is equal to false. So in the first line, we're locking the mouse in the center of the screen, and in the second one, we're making it invisible. Though by locking it, it turns invisible even if you set it to visible. I wanted to include that to make you learn that line in case it comes in handy later on. Next, let's create a new method called rotate to handle the rotations and call it in the update function. Now we have to say rot y plus equals to input the get access raw in parentheses and inside double quotation marks mouse x times rot speed times time dot delta type and rot x minus equals to input the get access raw mouse y times rot speed times time dot delta time. This part will return minus 1 if the mouse is moving to the left side, 1 if it's moving to the right, and 0 if it's not moving along the x axis. And we're multiplying that value by road speed to make it faster and by time dot delta time so that players with a stronger PC wouldn't have faster rotation. And we're adding it to our road y variable because as you can see by rotating an object along the y axis it'll rotate to the sides. Then you do the same thing for the road x but instead of increasing it by the results you decrease it because the value of the rotation goes up when it moves clockwise and down when it moves counterclockwise. So in this case, the value of the X rotation will increase when we look down and decrease when we look up. And when you move the mouse forward, the value returned would be 1 and minus 1 when moving it backward. So if we add it to the rotation, it will face down when we move the mouse forward. Therefore, we say minus equal to to negate that value and fix the problem. Also make sure you've typed these two exactly as I have or it won't work. And because we don't want the player to look inside its neck or behind its head, we have to set limitations for how far it can rotate along the x-axis. So we set the rot x to mathf.clamp. And for the first argument, we pass in the rot x, minus 90 for the second one, and somewhere around 50 for the third one. The clamp function takes a value and confines it to the next two arguments. So if it's less than minus 90, it'll return minus 90, and 53 if it's over 53, and won't touch the value if it's anywhere in between. Next, we say transform the rotation is equal to quaternion .eler, 0 for the x, row y for the y, and 0 for the z, to rotate the player along the y axis and make it look to the sides. Then we rotate the camera along the x and y axis, so now the camera rotates to the sides and up and down, and the player only rotates to the sides as it should. Now let's make a new method called move and call it in the update. Then we're gonna leave it empty and go subscribe to the channel because we understand the guy making this video has spent hours making this code as perfect and efficient as possible and we don't want to be that guy who comes and copies and goes. Also if you have any questions or topics you want me to cover, go ahead and leave a comment. Back to the code, we're gonna set the move delta to transform the forward times input dot get axis raw vertical plus transform dot right times input dot get axis raw horizontal. 
transform the forward returns a vector 3 pointing forward from our player in the global view and we use that to figure out the forward direction. If we don't, for example when we're holding down the W key, we'll always only move along the Z axis even if we're facing to the right. So we get the forward direction and multiply it by the vertical input. Meaning if we're holding down the S key, it'll negate the direction and make us move backward, as the value returned by the get axis raw would be minus 1. Then we do the same thing for the right direction and then add them together and assign it to the move delta. So now the move delta contains the direction the player is trying to go at this frame. Next we set the velocity of our rigid body to move delta dot normalize times speed. The velocity of a rigid body is the amount and direction the rigid body will move in each second. So we don't have to multiply it by time dot delta time as it's not dependent on the frame rate. The dot normalize part will return the vector with the same direction but with a magnitude of 1. It's good to normalize your vector so you don't have to deal with ridiculously large numbers. Now that we have the movement and rotation down, the only thing remaining is to make the camera follow the player. So in the awake function, we'll set the offset to the camera's position minus the player's position. This will calculate the camera's distance from the player at the start of the game. Then we're gonna use it to keep the camera at that exact distance from the player. So in the move function, we'll set the camera's position to the player's position plus offset. Come back to Unity, drag and drop the camera on its variable and give a value to the movement and rotation speeds. And just like that, you have successfully programmed the first person movement system. By clicking in the game tab, your mouse gets locked and it turns invisible, and you can get it back by pressing the escape button. Also, if you don't want it to be first person, watch this video next to learn how to program the camera to follow the player in three other ways and stay a golden developer.